tonight in our second annual virtual Christmas Eve gathering. Clearly not what we anticipated or hoped for. But I'm guessing that giving birth in a barn and laying a baby in a manger likewise was not what those first Christmas celebrants anticipated or longed for. We've been making preparations throughout this last four weeks in order that we might be prepared to receive Christ anew. We might be prepared. And in preparing, we found ourselves turning intentionally toward hope and toward peace and turned toward love. And we've turned toward joy. And in worship, we've been lighting purple candles and even this pink candle to reflect that we're turning toward these things. But even in town, we've been turning toward peace and hope and love and joy, quite literally, recognizing and remembering that it's in towns that Christ came to bring peace and love and hope and joy. Scripture tells us that long ago God spoke in many and various ways. But in these most recent times, he spoke to us through a son. And that son was the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And that in love, he came to live among us. Let's listen anew to the story of Christ coming. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. Joseph went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth. To 
to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. saying when the angel had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go oh, now to Beth With haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the This was truly a holy night. It was, and it is, and it will continue.
Christ appeared, soul felt its worth. Does your soul feel its worth? Does your soul feel its worth? You know, Christ entered the world to show humanity God's solidarity with humanity. Christ entered the world to show us that God aimed to liberate humanity from whatever was shackling us. As you just sang, chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. Christ's purpose is to free us from anything and everything that obstructs us from experiencing shalom or peace with God. Anything that's an obstacle to peace with God, peace with yourselves, peace between us, Christ entered the world to set us free. He came to give us hope that life is about so much more than just muddling through the mundane. To give us joy and hope and peace and love. For about three decades after that night in the manger, Jesus invited us not so much to adore him as to follow him, to join him in God's endeavor to reunite divinity and humanity and to reunite humanity with humanity. In fact, the Apostle Paul says that Christ came to break down the walls that divide us and create one new humanity. Truly, he taught us to love one another. And so for those of us who accepted Jesus' invitation to follow him, well, those folks ended up loving humanity quite tangibly. They ended up feeding poor people and healing sick people and setting stuck people free every day. And all along the way, they kept hearing that God so loves the world that he sent his son not to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Hmm. As the gospel is that God is with us. And the holy night, the night divine, Christmas, is just the beginning of the story of God with us, Emmanuel. It's a story that we live on earth and for all eternity. Hallelujah. And Merry Christmas. Now, when Christ walked the earth, he did the things that you and I tend to do. We celebrate holidays and we make our way into all of the ordinary tasks of life. But one of the things that he did regularly was eat with his friends. And maybe you're preparing for a meal even now, this weekend. Hopefully you've gathered some bread around wherever you are right now. Christ had a special meal that he and his friends would have been accustomed to celebrating. And late in his lifetime, he gathered his friends for that special meal. It was a meal of liberation, or the Passover meal. And Jesus took that meal with his friends, and he redefined it. Some even say he radicalized the meal, making it a kind of liberation that wasn't just from Egypt, but was for all eternity. So Christ gathered his friends in this gathering, and he took bread. And tonight, those of us who are here are taking bread that looks like this. Almost certain this is not what it looked like in Jesus' day. <laughs> but he would take the most common of elements. And we here tonight are partaking in this. He took the bread. And he reminded us that this bread represented his body. And he said... Uh, Though my body might have been born and laid in a manger on the first day, eventually 
it would be broken. And it would be broken for you and for me. So every time we partake of this bread, he invited us to remember him. So he offered a prayer before he ate, and I invite you to pray with me even now. Oh God, we give you thanks for this bread, bread from heaven. And we thank you for the body that reminds us that you are not ashamed of bodies. You came to take one on yourself and live beside us as bodies, showing us that we can join you in healing the world. We thank you for leading us and showing us and allowing your own body to be broken so that we might have an unbreakable image of your love for us. Thanks for loving us so tangibly as you did in Christ. It's in his name that we pray and eat. Amen. After asking a blessing, Jesus ate the bread. And I invite you at home to eat as well. said that in this cup it says blood of a new covenant that would be shed, shared for the many, for the liberation from their sins. Freedom forever. I invite you to drink this cup tonight as a renewal of your acceptance of this blood that sets us free. Let's drink together. said to the church, to those who followed him, he says, you are the light of the world. So I pray that we, into a time that is unusually dark and dreary as the second year of COVID, I pray that you and I, that we might literally be the light of the world, that we might take our bread and take our cup and take our reminder that God's on our side. We might take that into the world because the world needs us to be a little extra filled with light these days. So let's end our time together in a moment of celebration. In the ancient songs, the old songs we sing anyway, is go tell it on the mountain. And I think you guys are ready to sing that for us, aren't you? Yeah. Let's sing.
Well, friends, thank you wherever you are uh, tonight. Thank you for being a part of our second annual virtual Christmas Eve gathering. Uh, for those of you who join us regularly, keep in mind that this coming Sunday, as we gather for worship, we're going to return to this model where most of us will be at home observing and participating in this different kind of way as we experience together our children's Christmas program called Special Delivery. So tune in and uh, join us for worship on Sunday morning only at 11 o'clock. Friends, thank you for participating in this unusual way. I'm reminded that there is no place that Christ can't go. Whether you're at your desk or you're at your dining room table or you're in a sparsely filled room full of worshipers, May we go from this place, and as we go, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of God's Holy Spirit go with us and enliven us today and forevermore. Amen.